It's garbage day! <laughs> What's going on guys and welcome to another reputized video. Silent Night Deadly Night Part 2 was directed by Lee Harry and stars Eric Freeman. And it follows Ricky, a mental patient who escapes from a hospital and vows to take revenge on his dead brother Billy from the original. Instead of doing what I've been doing which was the positives and negatives separately, I'm going to actually lump it all in one. So here it goes. This movie it was not as good as the first one. The cinematography work by Harvey Jenkins or Jenkins was done really well, but it didn't have that Christmas vibe. There may have been like one scene in there where it snowed, but that was it. It was nothing like the original, but it wasn't bad either. I could see what was going on. It wasn't too dark and it wasn't too light. It was lit up perfectly, but it just didn't have that Christmas vibe. A little known fact, the director of photography actually does show up in this movie. He plays the Salvation Army Santa after Ricky actually kills him. So that was that was interesting, I guess. <laughs> the editing, which was also done by the director Lee Harry, wasn't, wasn't bad. It wasn't choppy or anything. Lee Harry and Joseph H. Earl story wasn't as strong as the first one. They focused more on the recaps. You see, like, the first... 40 or 50 minutes of this, you see a majority of what happened in the first one. And me as a viewer, I really didn't care because I already seen the first one. They played this one off as more of a flashback movie than anything else. Although it did get better by the maybe second half of the second act. But still, all those flashbacks were just unnecessary. I felt like they were just put there just because of the director didn't want to film anything new. Lee Harry actually said in an interview that he wanted to stay away from all that gore. He didn't want to go over the top. But then he started realizing, well, what's the point of doing a movie like this? Because that's why people go to it. So they had to up to Annie a little bit. Some of the kills wasn't bad. There was one kill with an umbrella, which I thought was really, really awesome. And the way it ended, it was like a hats off from the killer. And I thought that was pretty good. And there was another scene where they went to a theater and was playing a movie that had scenes in the first one again. It's all that recap and bullcrap that I couldn't really get behind. But it was it was the robber from the original, the one that started it all. And he was robbing that store, just like in the first one. It was that same exact scene. And the girl actually explains to Ricky, his girlfriend at the time, that it's all about a, a guy dressed up as a Santa that kills people. I mean, really? I, I don't know if they I don't know if they were going for comedy or campiness on purpose or what. The characters was the least bit interesting. I didn't care about any of them. The killer played by Eric Freeman. They were trying to play him off as like a Freddy Krueger type character. Eric Freeman wanted to play the killer as a menacing, serious, Michael Myers type guy, just like in the first one with Billy. But the director had other plans and wanted him to go over the top, be condescending. Garbage day! I just didn't find the killer menacing. I didn't find him scary. He was annoying. I just couldn't get into him. Because the story focused mostly on the flashbacks in the first 40 to 50 minutes of it, the music by Michael Armstrong wasn't as strong. The story has to be good and it has to be original and moving forward, especially if you're dealing with a sequel to this magnitude, for me to actually get into the score and everything else. And it just wasn't happening with this. Lee Harry's direction, it wasn't bad. By the time he, they got to like the last half of the second act, they finally started to move on. And when he escapes, that's when the movie actually starts, but it didn't do that until like an hour into it. And this is a 90 minute movie or an 89 minute movie. And that just didn't resonate with me at all. The Mother Superior character does come back, and ironically enough, her place that she lives at, the address is 666. 
yeah, that was kind of weird. I felt like this movie was trying to be campy on purpose. Even campier than the first one. I'm just saying. But this movie, it just felt like a real cash grab. I just felt like the filmmakers didn't have anything new up their sleeve because they focused on flashbacks throughout most of it. It just, it wasn't good, folks. I was very disappointed. My final thoughts, it just, it wasn't as good as the first. I wouldn't waste my money on it. Um, that's all she wrote there. Guys, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 2 gets a C-. minus. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, get reputized. Make sure to subscribe to the Reactor Reactions Galore, which is in the link down below. And also make sure to like the Reactor and the Repster on Facebook, which is in the link down below as well. What did you think of Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2? Did you like it or did you think it sucked? Leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think. Peace the rip out.